Hello self-publishers. Welcome to the fourth of my series of videos on how to format your own files in order to publish your book on Amazon's Kindle Direct Publishing. In the first video, we talked about how to just using Microsoft Word. You don't have to use a fancy design program like InDesign. How you can order the pages properly and have them number correctly. In the second one, I showed you how to format the text, the type to make that work. In the third, we talked about images. And in this video, we're gonna talk about the cover. So when you use Amazon's Kindle Direct Publishing, they offer you this thing called Cover Creator. But it's the very last thing that you do. You can't use their software until you've already uploaded your uh, PDF of your book because they will match the size of the cover exactly to the size of your book. So hopefully by watching this video, you'll get an idea of what the options are going to be for you so that you can prepare properly and sort of start designing how you want the cover to look. So in order for me to do this video and the reason it's taken me so long is that I had to finish my own book to use as an example. I had to get my own ISBN number I had to get my own Library of Congress number and I had to get everything proofread. So that's what you need to do before you get going on this. One thing you don't need to do, which unfortunately I said in my earlier videos, is buy a barcode. Because if you do have an ISBN and you insert it into the Cover Creator software, then Kindle will actually create that barcode for you. So that will be free. You do need to buy the ISBN though. Okay. And I've given you videos about how to do that. Okay, so let's get going and I'll show you just what you can do on Amazon's Kindle Direct Publishing's Cover Creator. <laughs> All right, here we go. These are the things you are going to need. For the front cover, you want to have an image, the name of the title, the subtitle, and the author. The title and author will have to match exactly what you told Bowker when you purchased your ISBN. For the back cover, you need your book description and your ISBN and, though it's optional, your author photo and a bio. The images have to be high resolution. They have to be 300 pixels per inch at the size that they will print. For the author photo, Make it at least 3 inches by 3 inches at 300 ppi. If you have an image you would like to use just for the front cover, make sure that it's at least 6.125 inches wide and 9.25 inches high. You have to prepare for a bleed. These books will be trimmed after they're printed. If you have an image that you would like to use across the whole back cover, spine, and Front cover, then make sure it's 13.5 inches wide and 9.25 inches tall. Hopefully you've set aside some images that will work for your book cover. All right, I have basically two kinds of images that would work. One is letters from my ancestors that are quoted in the book and um, the other is the photographs of Fanny and Charles. So I have one good one of Charles and here's the one of Fanny that I have. And then you want to have author pictures as well. So, um, and then I've taken those. Now I have the advantage of Photoshop, but I've uh, given myself some options of using the photographs and the letters combined in various ways. I'm not going to show you how to upload your book because KDP has its own videos for that. But first you're going to um, put in your book title, subtitle, and all this needs to be inserted before you start on your cover because KDP is going to draw this information into their cover creator software. Okay, so once you get to your second set of information, you want to insert your ISBN and the good news is that using KDP's cover creator they will make the barcode for you so you don't need to purchase one from 
uh, Bowker. Hopefully you didn't, because <laughs> they're going to insert one for you. Okay, I leave the publication date blank because um, they will insert the date when I finally get around to publishing this. I like white paper. It's a six by nine book. Um, no bleed. That means nothing uh, extends off the edge of the page. And I really like my covers to have a matte finish rather than a glossy finish. Okay, I've already uploaded my paper matte manuscript and that's important because that tells KDP how many pages are in my book because they're going to make my cover match that manuscript. So you have to have your manuscript already uploaded before you can launch Cover Creator. All right, finally, now we're going to launch Cover Creator. And I've already been playing with this, so some images are gonna already be inserted. Okay, so here we are in at the beginning of Cover Creator. And there are several steps. You choose design, and then within each design, you're going to be able to choose colors. You're going to have several layout options and you're going to choose your type and what size. Okay. Now these are suggested combinations, but you can also use very specific um, colors and very specific type. Let's talk about type size. The sizes that they specify in KDP are not standard sizes. So this says that I have set this to 12 point type. But actually when you print that up onto a six by nine book, which is what it's set for, 12 point, in standard size, it's 18 point. And let me show you how I figured that out. Font size is a standardized measuring system that printers use to figure out how big, how much type is gonna fit within a certain space. There are 72 points in one inch. So this guide here, which is for a sans serif type, but it's a good guide, um, shows you here's six point. Here's a 72, that would be an inch. And then we go to 125. So using this guide, I've measured the type that these major publishing houses have used on the back covers of these books. Okay. All right. So here is a book, um, Simon & Schuster, I think. Um, anyway, they've used 11 point. Okay. The crown is a trademark of Penguin Random House. And this is the largest of all of these. It's 13 point. Um, okay, so this is Oxford Press, and this is 10 point. Here we have Viking. That one's 12 point. And here's Scribner, and that one's 11 point. Okay, so between 11 and 13 points. So here are some printouts of a back cover set up using KDP's cover creator and using their font system, okay? So KDP told me I was setting this up in eight point, but when I measure it, it's actually 13 point. This one, KDP says is nine point, but it's actually 13 point. All right, and this is their 12 point, which is actually 18 point. So notice how this back cover which is supposedly 12 point, but really 18 point, looks really horsey compared to the professionally designed back covers by the major publishing houses. So the point is, I wouldn't suggest going over eight or nine points for anything you were gonna put on the back cover. That will give you more space than you think, and it'll also keep your design looking professional. So Amazon uses different names for their types. Um, let me show you, these are the options. So what you wanna do is go through here and find one that matches the text type that you have inside your book. All right, I've used Garamond throughout my book. So the one that I like that's the most like it of this crazy list, 
don't forget the type styles are copyrighted too. So they can't use all the uh, copyrighted names like Garamond or Scala or anything like that. They have to come up with their own crazy names for their type in order for everyone to be able to use it for free. So anyway, this one, Volcorn, sounds like an Ikea name or something, is fairly similar to the Garamond. So this is the one that I've chosen to use. And I suggest you use one type style in your book. Don't, don't mess with a bunch of different type styles because you're going to have one type style in your book and now you're going to have another type style in your cover and it's just going to get crazy messy. So just don't do it. You can alternate between all caps and caps and lowercase and things like that. All right, another thing that it's going to do is uh, give you the color choice of what color you want type to be. And the, um, the default is to put shadows on the type, but I don't like shadows, so I always delete those. Okay, that means the shadows are on, that means shadows are off. That's off. Okay, you can either um, justify your text or justify justify you know left and right or you can um, let's do left and right or just justify left or you can center text and you can justify it to the right okay usually I use justify left only now let's talk about how much trouble the designers went to to design the back covers of these books so here's Michelle Obama's book which is such a big selling book but look at how simple the back cover is this one is a very nice illustration it's great but is it necessary to go to all that trouble um, this one's really oriented around the blurbs about what a great book it is here's another very simple back cover and in the case of these two books, we've got a David McCullough book and um, one by Daniel Silva, where the author's very famous. They didn't even do anything on the back cover. They just put the author's photo. You can keep your back cover design pretty plain. You want a photo of yourself. You want a bio, probably a little longer than this. And you want the description of the book, something that's going to be something you can also use in your description on Amazon. There are 11 different, I'll call them themes. So you see six at first, and then there are five more. So we're going to number them one, two, three, four, five, six, like that. Okay, so the first one here, and I've just put this as a placeholder, the first design you would only use if you already had your type, like your title, your author name, and your subtitle already as part of your image. Because you, you import a whole image here, but there's no place to add type here. And then on the back, there's just one text block, which would be your book description. And if you want, you can add the author. It does include an author's picture, and that's not negotiable. <laughs> okay, so there are several designs of that. Um, this is the first one here. And then they just move these things around. Okay, this one has two type blocks. This one does two. This one does also. This one does also. And that has one type block. So you have to assess your needs. You know, what do you need to put on the back? That one has no picture, but it has two type blocks. And that one is just one type block, no picture. Okay, so, um, and don't forget, you can change the colors on any of these. So you can use different color schemes that they've given you. They give you a variety. Um, or you can do your own. So in my case, I made black the primary color. And then for the secondary color, I gave it a brown, which is here. Great. So in the second theme, it does allow you to insert text and you can change the size and things like that. But it doesn't really give you a good place to put your image. Let's show you some of the examples that they have, starting at the beginning. Okay, so this is the first one, 
and you can make this smaller, but let's make it smaller. Let's make it 48. But then you have your name and your subhead way down here below. So I guess if you could maybe squeeze your image there, but that still puts your subhead way too low compared to your title. I don't know, maybe you could make that one work. All right, um, let's try the next one. Um, again, your subhead's really far down here. So if you had a tiny image and you put it there, it might work. Here, a really small image. Um, again, image there, but I just don't like the way that the title and the subtitle are so separated. So that's what your possibilities are there. Okay, let's go to three. Okay, so in three, you have these color bands which are all changeable. You can um, change them. Let's just use one of these as an example to show you what you can do. Um, so in this, in three, you want an image that's maybe smaller. So maybe you, ha you don't have an image that looks good at so big. Let's just try this, doing it there, right? But you don't want your name to be so big. So maybe you can make that, whoopsie, 18. And you don't want this to happen. You don't want to have your text go over two bands of color. So let's see what some of the other possibilities are going to the beginning. All right, that could maybe work if you move this around. Um, let's make it smaller. Oops, that's bigger. Oh, that makes for a pretty t small title. Let's try this one. You could make that bigger. Maybe move the image up if you wanted to. I could maybe do. Um, this is the only one that actually has the title up here. I mean, I always like the title to be at the top of the page, especially if you're a new author. So you might be able to make this one work, make this text black. So you can change the color of the text and you can decide whether you want it to have a shadow or not. So this thing here means if it's lit up, that means they put a shadow on it. And if it's not, it doesn't have a shadow. Here though, that name's not gonna do right there. So I'd have to move the image someplace else. Um, let's make that smaller. Make a different color. Right, you get the idea. Okay, but it does, this is nice. This is, looks good. Okay, let's try another one. Anyway, there's some more possibilities. With it. it gives you a lot of variety on this one to move things around. So it kind of depends on the image that you have and what would fit. Here's number two again with a horizontal image. So this image here, choose this design, is the size of the whole spread if I needed to. So let's say you had a really horizontal image. All right, but you have to make sure that the background is shaded enough that your type will read over it. So this is the first layout, um, which could possibly work. Well, no, you'd have to move the, the image around, be different. That's with the name at the top. This is the second one. I fiddled with this a little bit. For example, I gave some space here to make this title move down below the bar. You don't want your title to cross over an image like that. Um, and I've created this background so that it's 90% shaded, only 10% image. That way you can read type over it. And then I've put it in the eight point. I set it to the eight point size. 
There you go. All right, and then this I made a little smaller than it was supposed to be. All right, so they have some other options. Um, here, that puts your name right in the middle. You'd have to make this smaller. I don't know why you'd want your name right in the middle of your layout. Um, this is divided the two, which could work for some books, who knows. You'd have to make your description shorter and your, I guess just your description would have to be shorter. Um, this could maybe work. You'd have to have a shorter description and a shorter biography. But this fits the fourth one. Okay, this one I'm just going to tell you, do not use it. It's ugly. It inserts this graph, which, which I think is supposed to be like book binding or something. And it just, it's ugly. Just don't bother with it. Forget that one. All right, let's look at five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I replaced the image. To prove a point, um, so five is, let's just say you had an image but nothing central, and you wanted your text to be the center of the image. So five would work for that because it puts a color bar over the image and then allows you a place for your title. Where it fails us is that it has a color bar over the background, but it's not a very opaque one, so your text is not going to show up, at least with this kind of image. Um, let's go to here. So here's another example where they've got the text here. You'd have to have black text, of course. Um, no, here obviously the text does your text doesn't show at all. But if your background was simpler, let's say um, just a sky or something, then it might work. So I'll show you. Just a minute. Of course, you can change the color scheme on any of these. All right, let's just say that we um, actually this could almost work, almost almost work, but this text doesn't show up at all. All right, let's just say that you used an image from KDP's gallery, such as um, one of these backgrounds. If we could find one that's just a simple background, something like this. Let's use this image. Okay. All right, so for something like this, where again, you don't have anything really central, but you just want to use some the background, then your text is going to show up. So it works really well for something like this. Let me show you all the different layouts. So here's the first one. Here's the second one. Third one. Fourth one. Fifth one. And you know, again, you might want to use a different color scheme to go with it. Anyway, you get the idea. Let's talk about a seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. Okay, for these four, you don't add any images. They already have built-in graphics. These have these little square designs. These are this kind of pen shape in various shapes. This one is a kind of a graphic of computer text. And these are organic, kind of leafy, water looking things. So I'll show you. All right, and the way you change things is by changing the color scheme. So your color scheme will affect how the graphic looks. There's just some changes. And again, you can make the colors anything you want. You can use anything in this uh, set of web colors here. All right, so let's start with this square. A lot of these can be kind of fun. Just remember that there are hundreds of thousands of people using KDP, and they all have access to these same four set of graphics. So you don't 
necessarily want your book to look like everybody else's book. Okay, I'll show you a few more colors just for fun. All right, there you go. All right. Okay, here's the pen shape one. Let's give it different colors. Let's do, um, um, no, I don't like that. Let's try that one. Okay, so for this one, you have your little S shape. So all of this layout would have that F shape. You can't move that around. You can change the text, but you can't change this graphic. Okay, then there's this one, which is kind of an L shape. This one, which is a circle. This one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. So I'll do another color just for fun. Like purple. <laughs> or maybe green, or we did that already, orange and blue. Okay, so now let's go to this one, which I I don't think you, you, this is ugly. I don't think it would work for anything, but I'll just show it to you anyway. So we're starting at the end, so we'll just go this way. That one, that one, that one, and that one. So I am not recommending any of those. And then last but not least, and these can be kind of nice actually, um, if you don't have any graphic that you can use. Kind of some reeds. I'll show you different colors. The 60s. Okay, then we've got these kind of brick shapes. Fabric. Leaves. And in all of them, the back is very simple. This is an angle, kind of some leaf shapes. And that's the wide one. The thing I don't like about this design is that you can't make the title any bigger than this and your name sort of right in the middle. So, I mean, kind of academically it would be okay if you're just doing it as an academic book or something and you just wanted to jazz it up a little bit. I'll show you some other colors. And again, you can use any colors that you want. These are just some combos they've given you. All right, let's do a quick review. The first one is for if you have an image of your cover that already has the text for your title, subtitle, and author embedded in the image. It allows you to put an image in but not to add text over the image. The second one, you can put in an image and the title and all the text goes over the image. So you have to be sure that your image isn't too contrasty so that all the text will read. The third one is similar. It has a band of color across the top, an opaque band of color that goes over it. and then everything else the text goes over your image. The fourth one, do not use, it's ugly. The fifth one has transparent bands that go over the image. So you have to use those wisely in picking your image. The fifth one has a very small area for your image and a lot more that's covered in color. So if you just have a small image to use, there are some varieties to choose from there. Moving on to the seventh theme, which is similar to the fifth one. There are different bands that make kind of graphics over the image that are also transparent. Then with eight, nine, 10, and 11, you have built-in graphics and you do not insert an image. There's one with squares, one with pen shapes, one with kind of text, and one with organic shapes. I barely introduced the images that KDP offers you. There are hundreds of them. So if you don't have an image already, you can scroll through their galleries and see what they have. They're high resolution. They're um, free to use. You just have to realize that there may be somebody else in the world that's using the same art for their book. 
So just to review, here are some of the important things. One, you don't want your type to be horsey. You don't want great big clunky type. So keep your back text cover under what KDP calls eight point or nine point. It's really more like 11 and 12 point. Keep your hierarchy in the order that you want it. This for me is a history book, it's a biography. So I am trying to keep it professional looking. I don't need it to be very dramatic and I need the colors to be subtle. I wanted it to read with the title first, subtitle second, and my name third, and I wanted an image that reflected what the story was about. Well, I hope that gives you a good idea of how to use Kindle's Cover Creator. They really do offer you a lot of ways to be creative, and it will keep you in line. You know that your file is going to work with KDP, you know that your spine is gonna fit your book, and that the type is gonna go down the middle. I would love it if you'd send me links to your book when you finally have it published. It would be really nice to see what the end result is. Keep on publishing and bye for now. Check out my earlier videos about self-publishing, how to set up the pages in the right order, how to format your text using styles, how to format and insert images, six things to do before publishing, and what makes a good book cover. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, write them in the comments section below and hit that thumbs up button. Thanks. Bye.